Welcome everyone to this video that discusses the 3-bit binary ripple counter. First let's analyze this ripple counter. It consists of three JK flip-flops and the JK inputs are all tied together or, or for each flip-flops the J and the K flip-flop are tied together and they're tied to logic ones. Therefore these flip-flops will toggle every time the uh, clock pulse is active on that flip-flop. The asynchronous inputs, the set asynchronous inputs are all tied to logic 1 therefore uh, they are inactive. The asynchronous inputs clear are all tied together and tied to one control line called clear meaning that any time clear goes low, is driven low, then the flip-flops are all cleared and the Q outputs go to zero. The clock inputs to the first flip-flop comes from the main clock, CLK. The second clock input comes from the output of the first flip-flop, the Q output. And the clock input of the third flip-flop is driven by the Q output of the second flip-flop. Thus, the clock pulse is said to ripple through the counter, and that's how the counter got its name. The weights of the outputs, or the outputs are called Q0, Q1, and Q2, and they have binary weights of 1, 2, and 4. Therefore, the counter is going to count in the sequence that will look something like this. Q2, Q1, and Q0. And the count states begin with 0, 0, 0, and then go to 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. And that would be the binary count states for the counter. Now, to see how that works in waveform analysis, we can look at these waveforms. First of all is at the beginning of the count, we will drive the cl not clear input low, which resets all the output, Q outputs of each flip flop to zero. Therefore, Q0 will be a zero, Q1 will be a zero, and Q2 will be a zero. Alright, the next thing that we can look at is that the clock inputs are negative going transitions. That means that the first flip-flop will respond or toggle when the clock input goes low. The second flip-flop will toggle, its Q output will toggle, when its clock input goes low, meaning when the Q of the previous flip-flop goes from a high to a low. Same thing happens with the third flip-flop since it's driven by the Q output of the second flip-flop. Its Q output will toggle when the Q output of the second flip-flop goes from a high to a low. So we can look at the clock input and, and determine that the flip-flop responds, the first flip-flop responds to the negative going transitions of the input clock pulse. So each one of these pulses indicate that the first flip-flop will toggle. Alright, we'll draw dotted lines down from here. And we'll just draw them down to the first Q output. This is going to represent the very first flip-flop. And since it's driven by the directly by the clock, 
then every time we get a negative going transition, then the Q output of the first flip-flop, which is Q0, will also toggle. Alright, now we can draw the Q output. It starts off at a zero because of the clear, and then at the first cl clock pulse, it goes, it toggles to a logical one and stays there until the second clock pulse. Since J and K are tied together and tied to one, it, we're in the toggle state, so that means we're going to go low, which stays that way until the next clock pulse, and then we go back high. And we continue this process toggling for each active clock pulse being fed to the very first flip-flop. So we end up with a waveform for Q0 that looks something like this. Alright, All right. now the second flip-flop is driven, its clock is driven by the output of the first flip-flop. So that means the Q output is going to drive the clock input of the second flip-flop. And it also is an NGT driven flip-flop. So we need to look at the out, the negative going output of the first flip-flop's Q output and we'll draw our lines down for each one of the negative going transitions of the Q output of the second flip-flop. It would look something like this. Alright, so that means the second flip-flop's output, Q1, is going to toggle on each one of those negative transitions. So we'll go 0 to here, and then we'll toggle to 1, right. stay 1, and then we'll toggle back to 0, stay at 0, and then toggle back to 1, and then stay at 1, and finally toggle back to 0. So that's the output of the second flip-flop. Now, the third flip-flop's clock input is driven by the Q output of the second flip-flop. So, it, it also is a neg negative going transition, so we need to look at that and find where the output of the second flip-flop is transitioning from a high to a low, so it would be here and a here. Alright, so now we can draw the output for Q2 of the third flip-flop. So it remains low until it gets to the negative going transition of its clock and then it toggles high. And it remains high until the next negative going transition and it toggles back low. And thus this would be the waveform of the output of the 3-bit binary counter. These represent the Q0, the Q1, and the Q two outputs. Now if you analyze the waveform and compare that against the uh, ch the uh, count sequence, you can see that <clears throat> initially we got Q0 is at a 0, Q1 is at a 0, and Q2 is a 0. That corresponds to this state. After the first clock pulse, we have Q0 at a 1, Q1 at a 0, and Q2 at a 0, or if you will, 0, 0, 1, which corresponds to this state. And then after the next clock pulse, we have a 1, a 1, and a 0. Oops, went too far on that one. Missed one clock pulse here. We have at the next clock pulse, which would be here, we have 0, 1, 0, which corresponds to this state. And then the other state that it was on, 1, 1, 0, corresponds to this state. And you can analyze the re remaining states, and they will uh, correspond to uh, the other states, ending up with the final state here, which is 1, 1, 1, which is this state, all right?
and then you can see that the the counter starts over again where the states all go back to zero zero and the count sequence continues from there. This concludes the video on the 3-bit binary ripple counter.